Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we're gonna compare the 5900X and the 7900X while gaming with a 4070 Ti. Now we're gonna compare it at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. Now we're gonna compare this across a number of different games. Some of them are older titles, some are newer titles. Uh, and for the most part for those games, I'm using the built-in benchmark just so I can compare apple to, apples to apples while gaming. Uh, it's got the set parameter. It goes to the same thing over and over again. So that way you can tell uh, precisely what the difference is between using the 5900X and the 7900X. I'm also going to play this with Modern Warfare 2, uh, Fortnite DirectX 12, and Fortnite in performance mode to give you an idea across a bunch of different games um, how this performance will vary using a 5900X or a 7900X. Other things to keep in mind, and you'll see it when we're uh, looking at the tables, is that as you go up, well, the higher resolution you go, you end up being more GPU dependent than CPU dependent. As you go down in resolution, uh, especially when you're using a more powerful card, you're going to find that uh, the GPU can put out more frames than what your CPU can handle. And that even in certain cases, the 7900X will be bottlenecking the uh, 4070 Ti, especially in a game like uh, Fortnite in performance mode. It just generates so many um, frames per second that the 7900X in certain situations does have a hard time uh, keeping up with it. Anyway, let's jump into it and look at some of the benchmarks. So both these CPUs are a 12 core, 24 thread uh, processor. The biggest difference is the 7900X boosts to 5.6 gigahertz, where the 5900X boosts to 4.8. And the base clock is also slightly higher at 4.7 versus 3.7. And one of the biggest changes from some of the old, uh, like the previous generations Ryzen CPUs, all the uh, current gen AM5 CPUs have a integrated graphics. This one comes with two cores in it. And it has a slightly higher TDP at 170 watts, but it does go much higher than that. Plus the 5900X also goes higher than the 105 watts. It's uh, rated to do. So the two CPUs that we tested uh, in Cinebench, um, the 7900X multi-core had a 35% gain over the 5900X. So 5900X came in at 21,883 points, whereas 7900X achieved 29,524. On the single core, we're seeing a 28% increase. So we went from 1588 up to 2026. And this is kind of got two components in it that uh, get that 28% increase. One is it's got the higher clock speed as well. Um, where I went and locked in the, uh, the CPU frequency for both the 5900X and 7900X at four gigahertz. The 5900X achieved 1300 points, uh, and the 7900X achieved 1430. So we have a 10% increase in performance just through architectural changes and an increase in the uh, instructions per clock. So all things being equal, it's uh, if it ran at the same speed, it would have better performance. But where it also boosts up to 5.6 gigahertz, we're getting a 28% uh, single core boost in performance. This is the main... Uh, in my opinion, was going to be the main driver in what we see next when we look at the benchmarks. Now, the two systems that I have, again, 5900X versus 7900X. So the 5900X system has 32 gigabytes of 3600 CL18, and it's on MSI B550 Tomahawk board. The 7900X has 32 gigabytes of 5600 CL36, and it's on a gigabyte X670 or Elite AX. So both are comparing fairly mediocre uh, RAM kits. And we're testing it on a GTX, GeForce um, RTX, sorry, a Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Eagle. All right, it's time to move on to the benchmarks. And for the first few games, these all had internally built in benchmarks. So I want to make sure I could compare apples to apples. So I picked games solely with uh, built in benchmarks. And then I also used some open world multiplayer games as well. These ones didn't have built in benchmarks. These were just 
uh, me going in and playing a full game. So there are going to be uh, some considerable variants here because uh, the differences can vary game to game based on what section of the map you were on, how far in you made it and all that. But it does give you a pretty good overview view. You might get different uh, performance um, varying from game to game, but overall uh, you're going to see um, a pretty big boost as well. And with all these games, I use the max uh, settings. That way I can put the most amount of stress on the GPU and not as much on the CPU because I already knew if you were going to boost, lower the settings, go for a higher frame rate, um, the 7900X would still be able to keep up better than the 5900X. So I was trying to level the playing field as much as possible by uh, going with the most graphically intensive um, settings that I could do. I did not have any uh, upscaling turned on or any sort of um, ray tracing. So everything was just native with ray tracing turned off. And as you can see, for the most part, the more graphically intensive games had the smallest amount of gain when using the 7900X. So things like Horizon, Forza Horizon 5 had 18% increase. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Valhalla, I was kind of surprised, uh, only had an increase of 10 and 14%. Uh, again, Ghost Recon is a fairly new game, so it only had an increase of 22%. And Cyberpunk 2077 had an increase of 12% on the average. We also saw pretty big uh, increases on the 1% low in certain circumstances. And then when looking at some of the older games, so like Far Cry 5, uh, we had a 65% gain because they're not as GPU intensive. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origin, 38% gain. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a 26% gain. And vice versa, we still had uh, pretty big gains on the 1% low across the board as well. There's a couple of instances here where we have uh, an actual decrease in performance, but we're talking 2 FPS and 3 FPS. So that's kind of in line with the margin of error. Uh, so I wouldn't take too much stock into that. But we did still see like the 1% low had a 16% gain here and the average had a 10% gain here. Modern Warfare, uh, I was surprised. I would have thought Modern Warfare would have been a fairly graphically intensive gain, but it's also fairly CPU intensive. So by upgrading to the 7900X, we're seeing a 38% increase in performance at the average and a 37% increase on the 1% low. Also, another thing to note for Night DirectX 12, this is using Unreal Engine 5. Uh, we have Nanite turned on, um, all the shadowing turned on, uh, Lumen and all that. So it's pretty graphically intensive using uh, that. So we're not seeing much of a difference there except for the 1% low. However, when going to Fortnite performance mode, which turns almost all of that off, we're seeing a pretty big uh, jump in performance. It went from 422 FPS up to 540. Uh, so we're seeing a 28% gain in the average and a 17% gain in the 1% low. With that being said, uh, when we were watching, we're playing through with the 7900X, I was keeping an eye on the GPU performance, and the 7900X is still um, bottlenecking uh, that GPU at 1080p in Fortnite performance. So even a better CPU, more faster CPU, you'll still be able to generate even more FPS, get more performance out of the 4070Ti. And on to the 1440p. Um, it, it's a marginal uptick in resolution. So we're still seeing some pretty big uh, gains. We're still seeing some pretty big FPS, like Far Cry 5, it's 110 and 177. When it was at 1080p, it was 110 and 182. So we're not seeing a fairly, or a really big uh, increase, or I guess drop in FPS. Um, so it's still fairly CPU dependent. So we're, especially on the older games, we're still seeing like 61% increase in performance on the 7900X. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, we have a 50% increase in performance. Uh, but outside of those games, we're, ga games, we're still, we are seeing a pretty big drop. Uh, Forza Horizon 5 is 13%, Assassin's Creed Origin. So if we, Ignore the like two oldest. I guess even I'm surprised Shadow of the Tomb Raider is pretty old, but we're still getting uh, only a 12% increase. So ignoring the games that are kind of really outliers, 
Um, we're only seeing a 10% increase uh, on those games, whereas in 1080p, uh, we're seeing a 20% uh, increase when ignoring Far Cry 5. But oddly enough, we're still like on the 1% low. We have a 46% increase and 83% increase with Ghost Recon. Um, we're seeing some pretty uh, big performance boost still at the 1% low, which would help smooth out the game compared to uh, the 5900X, which would have a wider um, variance in the, in the performance. See, we have like an 80 uh, FPS drop here, whereas it's only 50 under the 7900X. So there are certain situations in the game that become more CPU intensive, and the 7900X can keep up with that a lot easier. Looking at Modern Warfare 2, uh, we're still seeing big gains, 50% and then 16% at the 1% low. Um, again, Fortnite, DirectX 12, there's marginally no difference except under the 1% low. And then Fortnite and performance mode, we're still seeing a fairly big increase, especially in the average. Now going from 1440p up to 4K, we're gonna see a big drop because the resolution uh, is increasing substantially more. It's pretty marginal going from 1080p to 1440p, but going from 1440p to 4K um, is a lot more demanding. And in this situation, we actually see uh, in some aspects that performance um, is dropping with the 7900X. I'd still put that within the margin of error because it's not a huge change. And then, in the situation like Far Cry 5, where we were seeing pretty big differences uh, between the 5900X and the 7900X, where they're kind of disappearing when you hit 4K. We still have some pretty big boost on the 1% low, but the average is only 12% higher. So honestly, ignoring the uh, ones that have a decrease, we're seeing only a 7% increase in performance, and that's including Far Cry 5, which had the, the biggest boost. So. Uh, at 4K, you're not going to see any real difference between 5900X and the 7900X, at least not from the standpoint that you would want to upgrade your system. Going from 1080p or 1440p, you're going to see a big performance boost um, by upgrading to the new AM5 platform. However, if you're gaming at 4K, you're, yeah, there's real no benefit uh, to doing that. Except under... Fortnite performance mode, we're still getting ridiculously high frame rates. It's uh, a 45% increase in the average and a 28% increase at the 1% low. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I hope this video um, has helped you out in figuring out if you needed to upgrade your system or not, or if there is a benefit, or if you even want to go to, if you're on the old AM4 platform, if you want, even want to get the 4070 Ti, uh, because the uh, the performance is going to outperform the that line of CPUs, uh, 1080p and 1440p. So it might be beneficial just to go with a lower, um, a lower tier GPU. Anyway, if you found this helpful, uh, subscribe to the channel and like the video. See you later.